गुड डे एवरीबडी आई एम डॉक्टर सतबीर कौर अग्रवाल आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ एनस्थीजिया एट यू एन मेहता इंस्टीट्यूट टूडे आर बी कैरिंग फॉरवर्ड दी लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ कंटिन्यूस कार्डियक एजुकेशन एंड आई एल बी टॉकिंग ऑन द फॉन्टैन सर्कुलेशन आई एल बी स्टार्टिंग विद द बेसिक ऑफ वॉट फॉन्टैन सर्कुलेशन इज फॉलोड बाय हाउ द पेशेंट इज सिलेक्टेड हाउ द पेशेंट इज प्रिपेयर फॉर द पैलिएशन फॉलोड बाय सम पार्ट ऑफ द हिस्टोरिकल परस्पेक्टिव एवोल्यूशन ऑफ द फॉन्टैन सर्जरी बेसिक फॉन्टैन फिजियोलॉजी पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव कंसर्नस इट्स मैनेजमेंट एंड एजिंग विद द फॉन्टैन पेशेंट लेट एस स्टार्ट फॉन्टैन पाथवे इज मेंट फॉर फाइनल पैलिएशन फॉर अ फंक्शनल सिंगल वेंट्रिकल हार्ट डिजीज दैट इज द वेंट्रिकुलर मास इज नॉट बींग सेपटेटेड इवन विद सर्जिकल मेजर्स इन टू सिस्टमिक एंड पलमरी सर्कुलेशन सिंगल वेंट्रिकल सर्कुलेशन इज अ मल्टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिव सर्कुलेशन Uh, because according to the lesion and obstruction present at each level the blood is circulated and mixed in a variable state but a single ventricle physiology creates circuits which has two major disadvantages first is that there is systemic arterial desaturation at rest and secondly there is chronic volume overload of the ventricle about one in every 3000 congenital heart lesions have this problem and the uh, prognosis is not very good mostly patient die before they reach the end of their infancy what are the main indication for which the fontan palliation is taken up first scenario is the absence of two adequate av walls uh, such as in tricuspid atresia mitral atresia or hypoplastic left heart syndrome second is two adequate av walls with one hypoplastic ventricle such as in double inlet lv or rv or strad straddling of one av valve and third uh, is uh, repair possible but incomplete or difficult such as in large multiple non rootable vsts pulmonary atresia with uh, intact ivs and heterotaxy syndrome heterotaxy syndrome is particularly associated with the bad prognosis even after fontan surgery now how is a fontan circuit achieved future candidates must uh, be selected and prepared from the neonatal period and infancy itself it is not even just the selection but also the preparation of their physiology which is very important so that the final fontan palliation is a success uh, the three there are three major stages of palliation the first one can be divided into two uh, sub stages the first sub stage is that the adequate uh, systemic blood flow blood flow should be guaranteed that is there should not be any systemic outflow obstruction if there is it should be corrected with the coactectomy dumas kai stencil or norwood repair the first part was that but the second sub part of the first part is uh, balancing the pulmonary and the systemic blood flow that is qp qs should be appropriately balanced uh, this is according to whether the patient has a pulmonary over circulation or under circulation we need to stabilize the pvr so either we can do pa band to lessen that circulation or we can do a shunt so that there is a good arborization of the pulmonary arteries later on because both of these things play a major role in fontan circulation the second stage of palliation comes at around 3 to 9 months of age when the superior vena cava is connected to the pulmonary artery it is called the bidirectional glen shunt or partial cava pulmonary shunt uh, so basically here half of the venous drainage is already going into pulmonary arteries so the volume overload problem is solved by a half uh, after that the final stage of palliation which we will be talking about comes at around 2 to 4 years uh, in which the inferior vena cava is also connected to the pulmonary arteries so that is the modern version of fontan circuit a total cava pulmonary circulation looking at this uh, very old but first published case series from dr francis fontan and e bodet back in 1971 they did three cases of tricuspid atresia and it was their concept that there should be a new surgical procedure in which the whole vena cava blood is transmitted into the lungs while the only oxygenated blood returns to the left heart but uh, they uh, thought about ventricularizing the ra they 
took RA in, as a volume chamber and connected both the cable veins to the pulmonary arteries. Now, what is the basic concept of the fontan? The systemic venous return enters the pulmonary circulation without any interposing ventricle, which corrects the sinuses to quite an extent, but still due to high central venous pressures required for this, this uh, circulation is palliative and not curative. It, it is not physiological. Uh, the subpulmonary ventricle is bypassed on the cost of very high central venous pressure as a new driving force which leads to all sorts of pathophysiology associated with it. Secondly, uh, our physiological circulation has a subpulmonic ventricle which pumps the blood in a pulsatile manner to the uh, lungs which is the physio physiological way uh, but this does not happen in a fontan circulation. So there is no added forward energy to the flow through lungs and because there is no forward energy added there is decreased or to quite an extent fixed cardiac output because there is also absent preload reserve. So this is these are the major issues with the fontan circulation but yes it corrects sinuses to quite an extent. Now this was back in 1977 when uh, Chauset et al gave 10 commandments for ideal fontan candidate. It consisted of age which was 4 to 15 years, normal sinus rhythm, normal SV drainage, normal RA volume, adequate PA size, mean pulmonary artery pressure less than 15, pulmonary vascular resistance less than 4 woods unit, normal LV function, absence of pulmonary artery distortion and competent AV valve. Now after many years and uh, many uh, contributions to the Fontan area, uh, now we have come up with solutions to many of these commandments like age is now uh, around 2 to 4 years is considered ideal, uh, the normal sinus rhythm if not there can be handled by pacing, SV drainage if not proper, there are other repairs for it like Kawashima repair, normal RA volume if not there we can do an extra cardiac Fontan or RA plasty. If there is a pulmonary artery distortion, we can do a PA plasty if possible and competent AV wall can be handled with an AV repair. But the rest of these four commandments which is the adequate PA size, mean PA PE less than 15, PVR less than 4 and normal LV function, they still hold very true and they are very much required for a good font and circulation. Now this is uh, a study done in 2007 by Riyad Hossein et al in around 405 Fontan patients in which they compared their pre-op hemodynamic uh, parameters to their post-op morbidity late and early both and what they came up with was the two commandments and what they said was that elevated pulmonary artery pressures more than 15 pre-op and LV dysfunction were the two major commandments which should be followed. If these two are not there, then patient is not an ideal Fontan candidate. Now as a patient comes in our setup after Glenn procedure for a Fontan completion, we take full history and do a basic echocardiography. But along with that, we also in a mandatory way do a pre-op cathoxy or cath catheterization, cardiac catheterization is done in which certain things are to be seen. For example, the patency of Glenn shunt should be seen with PA anatomy, how the PA size is, if there is any confluence stenosis, are there any significant decompensing uh, veno venous collaterals present, IVC angiogram is done to rule out any interruptions in the IVC or stenosis or duplication because uh, that is the main connection that has to be done the drainage pattern of the hepatic veins. But the most important hemodynamic evaluation is the PA pressure, systolic, diastolic and mean, pulmonary vascular resistance and LVDP, left ventricular and diastolic pressure. Now this is one of the cardiac catheterization, the cathoxy done in our setup. Uh, here we can see that the MPA mean is given which is around 10 maybe because the MPA was ligated during the Glenn shunt. 
here the in the lv pressures uh, 110 by 7 is mentioned 7 is the lv dp which should be looked for it is very important then the qp qs the pulmonary vascular resistance over here lung arborization should be seen if there are there any avms veno venous collaterals how is the gland shunt uh, nakata and meggun index are for the pulmonary artery sizes and meggun ratio tells us about pulmonary size to aorta ratio and according to that after seeing all this uh, the advice is given so this is very important in evaluation of uh, fontan patient pre-op coming to how the fontan procedure actually evolved the first one was classical fontan procedure that was the first procedure done by dr francis fontan it is also called RAPA Fontan or Atrioventricular Fontan. Uh, it was the original procedure. RA was taken as a volume chamber and was included in the circulation. The IVC and SVC are on the two uh, ends of the RA. RA was the ventricalized volume chamber taken in. ASD was closed and uh, tricuspid valve was closed. RA was a receiving part of the venous return. So after the procedure, the procedure went well, but high incidence of right atrial dilatation and thrombosis were seen in many patients, along with arrhythmias which originated from that area. Then around one decade later, a lateral tunnel fontan was a new type of fontan that was introduced in which conduit was constructed uh, with both lateral wall of right atrium and prosthetic material. It is still being used for some patients. The major advantage with which lateral tunnel fontan has is that the child grows and the conduit enlarges with it because it has some part of RA involved in it. So it can be used for younger patients as well. Uh, it has reduced risk of RA related arrhythmias and thrombosis but still it is there and it is an open heart surgery. In 1988, Carlo Malesetti introduced the extra cardiac conduit fontan which is the most commonly used fontan right now. It does not require minimal, uh, it does not require or it requires minimal CPB. RA is completely bypassed so there is less association with arrhythmias, distension or thrombosis. There are no RA incisions or sutures cannot uh, enlarge as child grows because uh, this is a Gore-Tex conduit that is around 20 mm of conduit is used. So we have to wait till the patient is large enough to accept a graft of adequate size. So around 20 or maximum 22 mm conduit is used. But because it is a extra cardiac conduit, there is always a risk of obstruction by thrombosis or neointhemal hyperplasia. Coming to fenestrated fontan, this was given by Castaneda in 1990. It was quite a revolution in the fontan surgery. In this, a small fenestration is created between the conduit and the right atrium. It functions as a pop-off wall from right to left side. Sometimes when the pre uh, patient has borderline, borderline hemodynamic uh, criteria pre-op patients can be considered for a fenestration because the fenestration works as a relief pole whenever there are high cable pressures or high central venous pressures are there. It limits the cable pressures, it prevents rapid o volume overload to the lungs, it increases preload to systemic ventricle as well, so it increases cardiac output. Uh, these are the many advantages which a fenestration can provide in the immediate post-op time for the patient. And patient can tide over that difficult time if, if the borderline parameters are there like high PVR is there, there is higher side on the mean PA pressure or there are distorted PAs, or the diastolic or systolic dysfunction is there or there is AV wall regurgitation, we can definitely consider fenestration for the patient. Uh, uh, fenestration has been 
studied to cause less post op pleural effusions less post op uh, interventions are there because of fenestration and less amount of hospital stay now let's see a little bit more about the fontan circulation physiology fontan circuit is just like creating a dam which is upstream of the ventricle just like a dam flows from a higher gradient to a lower gradient that's how fontan works in this diagram as we can see the pressure builds in the ventricle this is the pressure uh, axis and this is the distance in the cardiovascular fontan circulation so here the pressure builds up and through the aorta goes into the systemic circulation after the um, drainage via the central veins it comes over here here is the fontan portal system or the baffle which connects it to the pa uh, from the pas it goes through the pulmonary circulation over here and goes to a lower gradient that is the la so the transpulmonary gradient which is the main uh, parameter in a fontan circulation is from the central venous pressures to the la pressures and this f over here denotes the fenestration and this fenestration works as a relief valve as i told you when the central venous pressures are high it directly supplies blood from right to left to the through this fenestration so fontan circuit works like a dam and the flow through the circuit is determined by overall resistance from the central veins all to the pulmonary atrium or the left atrium preload optimization hence is very important so that central venous pressures are maintained and secondly a low pvr maintaining low pvr is the second most important thing uh, as the fontan uh, circulation flows through this gradient and then comes to the ventricle all the changes at the ventricular level that is hypocontractility or diastolic dysfunction or low heart rate are of lower importance in controlling the cardiac output in the early post op period except for severe dysfunction but nonetheless av synchrony is vital we have to maintain a sinus rhythm throughout in the post op period uh, this is a slide about paradox in fontan circulation that is what is the main difference between normal circulation and fontan circulation in normal physiological circulation the central venous pressures are on the lower side they are less than 10 mm hg and pulmonary pressures are higher and of pulsatile nature due to the ventricle but in fontan circulation the central venous pressure as it is the main force has to be on the higher side that is ideally 10 to 15 mm hg which is also called the fontan pressures and pulmonary pressures have to be kept low hence low pvr is the achilles heel for an ideal fontan circulation post op but this paradox amounts to lot of problems after the patient tides over the initial post op period the major determinants of this circulation hence is not the heart but the transpulmonary gradient as i explained you it is the gradient from systemic veins to the la and it should be ideally less than 7 mm of hg over here are the determinants of these two pressures systemic venous pressure is controlled by of course the preload and uh, after in the post op period there will be some degree of venous congestion normal range of fontan pressures can be from 13 to 18 mm hg at rest but above 20 mm hg of post op fontan pressures are related with morbidity and the determinants of left atrial pressures are the av valve how it how, how it is functioning is there any regurgitation is there any diastolic dysfunction uh, of course av synchrony maintaining a sinus rhythm and fenestration so this diagram represents the hemodynamic considerations for optimal pulmonary blood flow and cardiac output in a patient with fontan physiology post op so starting from the baffle over here first of all we need to give volume or optimize preload and a negative intrathoracic pressure that is low peep and uh, early uh, spontaneous respiration trial is a must post operatively secondly the blood flows through the pulmonary artery uh, so intrathoracic pressure again on the lower side and no anatomical obstruction uh, is important for this flow to go ahead
then the flow goes to the pulmonary circuit so ideally 2 to 4 woods unit of uh, pulmonary resistance is okay but less than 2 is ideal so how we ventilate the patient is the patient generating good frc how is the ph management blood gas management temperature and stress response everything has to be handled well so that the pvr remains on the lower side and the fontan circuit uh, works properly then after through the pulmonary circuit the blood is drained to the left atrium via the pulmonary veins so normal pulmonary veins competent av valves good sinus rhythm uh, contractility uh, no outflow tract obstruction and after load reduction these all come in the end so if we see the basic post of management of the patient these are the must semi fowler position volume 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 that is pre load optimization for good cable pressures lower peep early extubation uh, av synchrony is vital keeping sinus rhythm and there should be constant drainage of pleural and pericardial spaces the bilateral icds and the pericardial icd which is there have to be drained consistently because the patient do not tolerate uh, any pleural effusion post op even ascites should be looked for inotropes and leucotropic drugs now these are the major uh, post operative concerns in the early period which can uh, be seen in the icu like low cardiac output syndrome pleuropericardial effusions rhythm disturbances fenestration premature closure persistent hypoxemia or thromboembolism bleeding complications low cardiac output following fontan surgery if the patient comes in the icu and has uh, borderline urine output bad peripheral perfusion borderline pressures with high lactates and acidosis setting in it is said that the patient is not performing as it should so we have to quickly and accurately diagnose this low cardiac output and uh, know why it is happening the major goal of post operative management is to keep the trans pulmonary gradient less than 7 mm hg for adequate pulmonary blood flow and cardiac output but uh, uh if the patient has persistent low systemic perfusion along with high fontan pressures and large volume requirements which are unresponsive to maximum inotropes it is called early fontan failure and sometimes uh, to save the patient a uh, surgeon has to take the decision to take down the fontan now this table represents the low cardiac output syndrome in patient various scenarios which can present to the physician in the icu after fenestrated fontan procedure now there are four situation given over there first is when the fontan pressures are on the higher side and the left atrial pressure are low or normal but the trans pulmonary gradient is more than 7 if the patient has fenestration there will be more right to left shunting and the patient will desaturate over about 75 to 100% so the differential diagnosis is that there can be decreased pulmonary blood flow because of which there is increased shunt across the fenestration elevated pvr fontan pathway obstruction pulmonary artery branch stenosis so after diagnosing it quickly either by either by eco or by cathoxy we can start the treatment accordingly like increasing the fio to to decrease the pvr considering nitric oxide early extubation can be considered if the patient is clinically good enough or uh, after cathoxy if you have diagnosed some kind of anatomical obstruction we can act upon that and if the thrombus is suspected we can start with the thrombolytic treatment second scenario with the fenestrated patient is if the fontan pressure is high and the left atrial pressure is low but the oxygen saturation is still more than 95 that means the fenestration is not working it is either closed or thrombosed so sometimes to save the patient we must consider cardiac catheterization to open up the fenestration or thrombolytic treatment third scenario is i think by far the most common scenario which we see in which patient comes to the icu post op and due to the fluid shifts in the body there is to some extent a lower fontan pressure so what we have to do is just replete the volume 
and treat the hypovolemia. This is successful in mostly all the cases. And the fourth scenario is when the fontan pressures are high and the left atrial pressure is also high. This That means that uh, the heart it is at fault over here. So there might be arrhythmia, diastolic dysfunction or some systemic outflow obstruction is there, AV valve insufficiency or tamponade. So we must act accordingly, manage the arrhythmia, maintain a sinus rhythm, reduce the afterload, consider inotropes. Uh, treat the outflow tract obstruction if the patient is having tamponade milk the chest tubes and uh, treat the tamponade and always and always encourage the chest tube drainage next the pleuropericardial effusion sometimes patient presents with persistent increased pleural effusions because of high fontan pressure post-op bilateral ICDs are mandatory uh, respiratory compromise ensues with hypovolumia and hypoproteinemia, so it should be quickly dealt with and drained. Uh, sometimes around in 21 to 45 percent of patients, this if pleural effusion and its drainage lasts for more than 10 to 14 days. Low fat intake, high protein diet, diuretics and replacing the fluid and protein loss are the main treatment for this. Mostly these patients their drainage ceases within 20 days of the surgery but if uh, for persistent cases sometimes harsh de harsher decisions have to be taken like pleurodesis or thoracic depth ligation or fontan takedown talking about rhythm disturbances post-op there are rare but still can occur like sinus bready or junctional rhythm loss or loss of av synchrony which should be treated with temporary pacing Although it is very uncommon with the extra cardiac technique. A atrial flutter, AFib or VFib can occur, although uncommon, but can quickly lead to hemodynamic compromise. Because loss of sinus rhythm means increase in the LVDP, increase in LA pressures and fontan circulation will fail. So prompt treatment is very important. And pacing wires have to be put in postoperatively. Talking about hypo hypoxemia, normal ranges for uh, saturation uh, in extra cardiac fontan is around 96 to 100 and for fenestrated it is around 75 to 100. And uh, if the patient is in persistent hypoxemia, there are many causes for it. First of all, there are the causes related to the lungs like pleural effusion, atelectasis, pneumothorax uh, or infection which could be ruled out or low cardiac output with low SVO2 large right to left shunt across the fenestration or additional leak in the baffle or rarely it could be an intrapulmonary shunt or veno venous collateral which should be ruled out with the cardiac catheterization. Thromboembolism post fontan is a major issue and uh, according to a meta-analysis of around 1200 patients post fontan surgery, the incidence of thromboembolism is around 11.8 percent and freedom from thromboembolism is only 19 percent even after three years so this is a major problem in the early and the late time period both and it is highest in the first year after fontan currently there is no evidence that uh, anticoagulation with warfarin is superior to antiplatelet therapy in preventing these events but still aspirin thromboprophylaxis is the most effective strategy because it has a very little effect on the patient's normal day to day functioning and less side effects. In our setup warfarin prophylaxis is given from the second day post op up till the 3 months post fontan surgery and we target an INR of around 2 to 3. Now we come to aging with fontan surgery. That is how the patient is performing after he or she has gone through the post-operative time period and now has gone home. So how the patient is living with the fontan heart. In a retrospective study of Mayo Clinic of around 40 years of uh, 1052 fontan patients, overall survival rates were 74 in 10 years, 61 in 20 years and 43 in 30 years. These are not very good figures, but the good news is that after 2001, when the newer techniques have come up, 
the 10 year survival rate has increased to around 95 percent but still fontan circulations are flawed circulation it is like exchanging survival in the infancy to a much more problem related fontan circulation after uh, the patient enters adulthood why does these long term complication occur first of all due to adequate lv loading can happen only at the expense of raised central venous pressures so the whole of the body have this issue of raised central venous pressures in every uh, area of the body so the cardiac output is low and fixed so there is systemic congestion fibrosis and these patient have low exercise tolerance secondly due to chronically decreased preload and increased systemic vascular resistance it results in systolic dysfunction of the heart and progressive diastolic dysfunction also occurs because there is persistent preload deprivation so slowly and steadily there is decrease in the functioning of the heart as well thirdly due to chronic low flow state of the pulmonary vasculature it induces pulmonary vasoconstriction it increases the pvr now this is a uh, study of long term mortality after fontan procedures it was a review by tarek al said et al of around 6700 fontan patients so as you can see the major cause of post op long term mortality is heart failure followed by sudden death due to arrhythmias respiratory failure renal failure thromboembolic events infections protein uh, sorry protein losing enteropathy liver disease malignancy and other causes now this figure over here actually uh, accurately represents how fontan circuit affects the whole of the body first of all the lymphatics are affected because of higher vascular resistance so there are more uh, uh lymphatic pressures are increased so there is impaired lymphatic reabsorption which causes all sorts of problems lungs can uh, be affected because there is slowly steadily increase in the pulmonary vascular resistance and we know venous collaterals are formed ultimately low cardiac output and progressive cyanosis if we talk about liver the term for it is fontan associated liver disease uh because of the higher uh central venous pressure there is a passive congestion even post op which continues on and according to one study 95% of fontan patients post op show some degree of silent cirrhosis after just 10 years of the surgery so liver dysfunction is very common and long term side effects can include sinusoidal fibrosis uh leading to central lobular necrosis hepatic cirrhosis and even rarely hepatocellular carcinoma if we talk about the brain uh, the incidence of strokes are very high about 5 to 6% in these patients post the surgery uh, and there is also also to quite an extent decrease in neurocognitive functions of these patient the basic skills are decreased if we talk about the heart arrhythmias occur there can be progressive dysfunction both in systolic and diastolic respect there can be pulmonary artery obstruction pulmonary venous obstruction many other issues can come up kidneys uh, renal impairment may result and sometimes results due to persistent poor perfusion of the body because of low cardiac output state and uh, it is associated with very poor prognosis peripheral veins because of higher central venous pressures again can have varicose veins and persistent edema fontan failure is uh, the stage <clears throat> when there is nyha grade 3 or 4 heart failure and the patient uh, deteriorates with either death or fontan takedown or conversion and the only solution to save the patient is cardiac transplantation there are many burdens on the fontan heart restrictive or obstructive lung disease venovenous collaterals or avms form over time arrhythmias thrombosis av valve regurgitation pulmonary artery stenosis pulmonary venous stenosis 
and progressive diastolic and systolic dysfunction. So all these problems uh, occur in a Fontan heart sooner or later. These are some clinical manifestations which are common and I will be describing them briefly to you. First are the thromboembolic events, we talked about them around 6 to 25 percent with incidence of stroke because Fontan circulation is a passive circulation and it is also associated with the hepatic dysfunction. All these things lead to thromboembolic events. So if a patient comes with you, then you can try thrombolysis, anticoagulation and if it is a RAPA classical Fontan, we can do a Fontan revision because mostly the thrombus when it comes in such RAPA Fontan, it is in the RA itself. So we can do the Fontan revision if possible. Second is protein losing enteropathy. This occurs in around 5 to 15 patients and uh, related with poor prognosis. The etiology is not very well defined but mostly it is due to a fixed low output condition and higher splanchnic circulation pressures. There is loss of albumin from the gut which leads to all the manifestations. There is a decrease in immune function as well and there is refractory edema associated with it. Enteric steroids like budesonide have been tried but not with much success. IVIG and IV albumin have been tried but it is just palliative. If the patient does not respond, the failed fontan can be treated with cardiac transplantation. Plastic bronchitis occur rarely in around 3 to 5 percent pa patients mostly in pediatric rather than adult group but when, is, when it occurs it is very difficult to treat because there is deposition of fibrin in the respiratory tract. We can try bronchial lavage, aerosolize, mucolytics and fibrinolytics and pulmonary vasodilators. But the ultimate treatment again is cardiac transplantation. Ventricular failure as we talked about, ACE inhibitors have been tried with beta blockers but carvedilol has been seen to be promising in the later stages of to prevent the cardiac failure in later stages. Then comes refractory edema or ascites in which we can go for highest doses of diuretics and pulmonary vasodilators again. Talking about tachyarrhythmias. Uh, the interatrial reentrant arrhythmia is the commonest if we see tachyarrhythmias with these patients and again it is more common with the RAPA fontan. So you can try fontan revision if possible or catheter ablation or antiarrhythmics. Uh, and lastly cirrhosis or HCC that is FALD. When this occurs the patient is in end stage liver failure cardiac plus liver transplantation is the ultimate treatment for the patient. Now I would like to just talk about uh, some perspectives of future of Fontan surgery, how it is being improved and what is the future associated with it. First is the personalized Fontan circulation that is because we have a lot of improvement in the cardiac imaging nowadays. The surgeons and the cardiac imaging experts can actually see the anatomical distortions like if pre present with the anatomy of the patient and with 3D printing and other techniques they can come up with a model for a personal fontan circulation for a particular patient. The, we have still have a long way to go for this but still this can optimize the post-op recovery to quite an extent. Secondly, it is tissue engineered vascular grafting. When uh, as we know, we um, go for 20 mm Gore-Tex conduits in patients which are around uh, in the patients which are about 2 to 4 years of age but for younger patients it is uh, too big. So there is some stagnation volume at the expiratory phase for these patients which incre increase flow stagnation thrombogenicity. This is within the conduit. So if we use conduits that are either manufactured from or gradually populated with the patient's own cells, then it can mitigate this problem. So if the thrombogenicity is reduced, the late outcomes for the patient can increase. 
thirdly uh, there is a concept of a cavo pulmonary assist device which is done only in vitro this concept is very very new but uh, employment of a viscous impeller pump in the circuit itself in the baffle can add energy to the circulation to raise the pulmonary artery pressure by few mmhg and lower the central venous pressure by few mmhg this is done only in vitro but has shown promising results it is still a lot uh, of time is left for it to work in vivo but we can still hope for it to work in the future thank you